Have you ever been browsing through all the online suggestions for new Linux users when picking your first distribution, only to find yourself stressed out by all the different terminologies and still couldn't pick one? Don't worry, today I will narrow down all the lists to one distribution, Linux Mint, and give you my 9 reasons why you should be your first, so you don't have to worry about making the choice and start your Linux journey now. Hello everyone, my name is Hugo. I'm a part-time YouTuber day trade as a software engineer. I'm constantly learning how to make my videos better to help more people fall in love with Linux. So if you're new to Linux or having been enjoying my videos, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel, which will help me massively. Your help is my daily motivation. Let's now start with the content. First, you should choose Linux Mint because it is easy to install and upgrade and it will support very old hardware. The latest Mint is based on Ubuntu 22.04, and by comparing the two on the system requirement, it is interesting to see that Mint actually needs 5GB less on storage compared to Ubuntu. Sadly, Ubuntu is no longer mentioned what is the minimum requirement for the RAMs on their official website. I'm very interested to compare that as well. But still, if you're reviving an old PC, the 5 GB difference can be the determining factor for you. The second reason is that the installation has very few steps. You only need to click the continue button 8 times to finish the whole installation, which means you don't have to make a lot of decisions, except for the user creation and the codecs. You don't have to change anything else, the installer will take care of everything behind the scene. I know it still has more steps than installing Windows, but you don't have to be forced to log into your Microsoft account if your PC has Wi-Fi. You can create a local account with a password and start using it right away. You don't have to worry about the system tracking your browsing history or the advertise ID or your location information. Of course, they will be eventually tracked by Google, Facebook, and Microsoft anyway if you're using their services. The third reason is that you don't need to be forced to upgrade. This is not specific to Mint. I've never used any Linux distribution that does this to me. I remember one of my friends who loved watching eSport tournaments once told me that the Dota 2 tournament live was forced to be paused during the game because Windows suddenly decided to update itself. After the installation, let's talk about the proprietor software. And speaking of proprietor driver, of course, let's start with NVIDIA driver. The driver installation is literally in your face on the first boot up of the system. If you missed it by closing the window, you can go to the setting and click on the driver button. And if that is too many steps for you, just reboot your system and the welcome page will pop right back. The sixth benefit is that it is easy to switch between NVIDIA and your integrated GPU. I love that Mint team decided to put a small icon on the system tray displaying the currently in use GPU. I remember it only supported Intel and Nvidia and surprised to see that with version 21 it has an AMD icon now. This is so well thought out because Intel and Nvidia was so dominant back in the days that when AMD and Nvidia laptops become popular, not a lot of distributions care about this combination. You can only find those support on gaming-oriented distributions like Garuda or Pop! OS, or the cutting-edge ones like Arch. This is attention to detail. Thank you, Mint team. Now let's talk about Codex, which is another proof how much attention they put into the distribution. The Mint team understand the fact that most people started trying out Linux because they got fed up with Windows. Most of them who want to try out Linux may not care about freedom, tweaking, or maybe even privacy. All they want from a system is for it to work properly without too much effort to maintain. And including proprietary codecs in the distribution helps just that. Let me explain. If you have any video that is encoded with H.265 instead of X.265, you won't be able to play it on one of the most popular distributions. Fedora without some tinkering because it is designed to use all the open source software out of the box and H.265 is not one of the free licensed codecs. But that is not the case for Mint. 
you as a user have the power to include them right from the beginning. Once they're installed, you don't have to worry about which codecs you're downloading anymore. And that is almost everything you needed to set up the distribution to work properly. Let's talk about how easy it is to use the system. First, it looks very similar to Windows out of the box. The most popular Windows versions in history are probably XP and 7. And they have the same design philosophy of the menu button on the bottom left corner with the time and calendar on the right. It has been the same way for Linux Mint as well for years. So for those who just started Linux, they will feel right at home after the installation and they can start doing their daily hustle without any hiccups. The next reason you should use Mint is because Firefox will start faster on Mint than Ubuntu. Ubuntu has developed the tool called Snap to mitigate the pain for application developers to distribute their works to different Linux distributions. Linux users can use it to install applications no matter which distribution they decided to go with. But the issue is that the Snap applications tend to start very slow. Despite being built on top of Ubuntu, Linux Mint has decided to ditch Snap in their own system. This decision has paid dividends lately because everybody's favorite browser, Firefox, decided to ship their browser on Ubuntu as a Snap package starting 2204, which means people started noticing they have to wait a longer time for Firefox to boot up ever since the release of Ubuntu 2004. A lot of people blame Ubuntu for that, but few people noticed the fact that the decision was actually made by Mozilla, the company who owns Firefox. If you happen to decide to go with Linux Mint, you won't have that issue at all. Finally, let's talk about gaming. Ever since Valve decided to release Steam Deck, gaming on Linux has evolved a lot, which makes perfect sense. Who pay for a system which will stop the gaming session while doing the update? With the recent announcement of NVIDIA to open source their driver, the wind is blowing stronger than ever favoring those who want to play games on Linux. For this video, I will show you how I'm able to play Divinity Original Sin 2 as an example. But check the game you want to play on ProtonDB website to see how much effort you need to put in before you can play the game. This game is rated as gold, which means it needs some slight tinkering but I was able to play it without fixing anything. I guess that is probably because the developer fixed the issue when making it Steam Deck compatible lately. Now, go to the software manager and install Steam. Log into it. Go to settings and enable Steam Play for all the titles. Restart Steam and install the game. I was able to play it using my Xbox One controller without any issue after that. Now, you're probably pretty hyped about using Linux Mint on your personal PC. But before that, I want to mention something. First, it can be a little bit heavier than some of the distributions out there. I love Linux Mint, so when I was forcing my father to switch to Linux, this is the first distribution I made him try. Although he didn't encounter any major usability or stability issue, we noticed some performance issue on his 12-year-old laptop, that the online video is quite laggy. I switched it to MX Linux, and the issue was gone immediately. Now, instead of Mint, his favorite distribution is MX Linux, and he fell in love with XFC after switching from Cinema as well. Finally, I want to warn you that Linux Mint is not particularly good for the cutting-edge gaming laptop. I have a 2020 ASUS Zephyrus G14. Although I have no issue to report with Mint 21, which was released this year, when I was installing the version 20 last year on the same machine, it crashed on the initial boot up after installation. So if you choose to go with Mint, make sure you don't do it on the cutting edge machine. Because if you see my video here, you will notice it didn't work without any tinkering for the one year old machine. And that is all for this video. Thank you for watching. Until next time, bye.